Okay. Uh, the fun part about what we're doing here is that, is that, uh, as I was just saying, we put on a little dark, we put on a little light, and we make it look like hair, and just with a few strokes, all of a sudden we've got, we can we can see something happening. We can see hair developing. We can see hair in relationship to this, all in relationship to what I'm looking at in the mirror here. And uh, it starts to make some sense. And so I hope that in the practice of this, that you that you develop that confidence through through doing doing it in this manner, that all of a sudden your images begin to make some sense. You can see you can see how it works. You know, I think that once you once you get to that point, you're gonna start having some fun at this. You know, and and realize that you know. You have to, I have to pay attention, but if I do pay attention and I try and translate what I'm looking at, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start turning out something, some interesting art, you know? And then the hard part begins. What we're learning here, what I'm trying to show you here is, is just a method, a hundred methods, of painting a picture. A, a realistic picture, not an abstract picture, and a realistic picture, being painting what you're looking at, you know. Um, but once you develop some some skill at at painting like this or in some similar fashion, then you can begin doing what you want to do. I mean, painting pictures. Well. You know, I guess there's there's some intrinsic value to it, and it's therapeutic and this and that. But if you want to be an artist, you want to be able to not only translate what you see, but begin to appreciate things that you see, and begin to recognize when something is important to you, something that you appreciate in the world of creation is important to you and may be important to somebody else. And you begin to know, you know what, I, I have some things I like to say with my art. And after you develop a skill and you develop some confidence in being able to paint what you want to paint, then you can begin producing an art which is valuable to other people besides yourself. It's not just a lark. It's not just a practice. It's not just a work. It's, it becomes a service, you know? And an art is a service throughout history. Uh, the world has developed because of art, you know? And it's a, you know it's always a question that we have to ask ourselves what what's the value what's the point of what I'm doing you know it can't just be for me it can't just be for for uh, the self gratification of trying to be good at something it has to be something else and um, so this is what this is what it's about Mark Toby a great abstract painter of this century. Uh, said a wonderful thing. He he said, "You have to master the master the prerequisites before you are allowed to experiment. You know, before you should be allowed to experiment. And that's sort of what we're doing here. We're taking one style of painting, which is uh, uh, this style, and uh, and learning what it takes to become good at it." to become uh, confident with it so that you can proceed and do something which is of you, you know, which is your art. Um, painting pictures is not about just, to me anyway, it's not about just painting pictures. It's about saying something, you know. Anyway, so back to this. Here I am, I'm just, I put a few lines on here, just right in here. I put it a little dark and I put a little light, and all of a sudden, I can start seeing some hair. 
And, uh, and as I see the hair in this particular place, and I move down, and I'm starting to look, my eye is looking at, at the beads, and so it's good and cool. I can, oh, see, that's too light. That's too light, but we'll leave it. I'm just going to just dab it a little bit. I'm going to darken it up there. It's too light. It's too light too early. There we go. So I've darkened it up a little bit. We've gone over that area I've just gone over. Now, I'm throwing in all kinds of little lines and stuff for the hair that I'm looking at right at the moment. And uh, not because I'm going to keep it this way, because I know that, that my hair is going to change the next time I sit down to this. But I want you to get an idea of the process of how this hair is painted. When I change the actual shape of it, and the curls change here or there, uh, according to how I want it to look, you know, we got to really be concerned with how we look. Um, that's a joke, by the way. <laughs> um, um, I forget what I was going to say, but anyway, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm putting a basic hair shape so I can show you the process, no matter, oh yeah, no matter what shape the hair eventually, whatever form it eventually takes, the, the painting process of it is exactly the same. And it's really easy. Some colors of hair are a little harder than others, but the process is exactly the same. You want to work from dark to light. You want to pay a particular attention in the beginning to where your deepest shadows are and where your high, brightest highlights are, and, uh, and then work with those. Don't get too carried away. Don't get too fancy right in the beginning. If you want to get fancy later on, eh, that's up to you. But fancy meaning overly detailed and putting in every little hair and all that. Some people want to do that, and there's nothing wrong with that, except sometimes it can get very boring and doesn't necessarily help the, the final image. Okay, you can see I'm working down here. I'm going to do it a little bit more right down to where the, uh, the, sh the hair and the shadows begin to interchange with the, or not interchange, but uh, overlap the beads. See the hair, you know, I'm allowing the hair in my strokes here to cover up these beads. And I'm going to go back, I'm going to paint these beads, and I'll come back with some other dark lines, and I'm going to go back over it again. You know, that's how that works. But, just trying to get a, a shape. And now, all this time now, I'm trying to remember the distance between the bottom of my hair, where it is right now, it changes, its length changes all the time, obviously, to the bottom of my chin. That gives me the right distance here. So I got about that much. Okay. So we're just going to do that for right now.